let's do some stuff for advanced players today. I'm going to go back to doing kind of a series on the, on the, as I have before on play along videos where there's more advanced videos dedicated for advanced and more intermediate. It's going to be a little more advanced. Um, if you already don't already know about the channel, uh, you know, I'm here to give you tools to help you become a more consistent player, you know, when to play, how to play, what to play, feel happier, more confident in your music. <laughs> So whether you're a fiddle player who's used to memorizing like lots of tunes, lots of long melodies and that sort of thing, this is going to be good for you because you're going to be able to play shorter phrases back. And I think there's a lot of use in that. But even if you don't play fiddle styles, I think this is going to be useful for you because we're going to use a lot of blues scales. So just play after me. We're in a groove on E here. Uh... Try to make it shorter, that was my bad. I changed that from the C sharp and the D. I'm warming up. longer phrases. This, uh, this special scale, you're going to get it. still dialing it in. You're going to get this though. Trust me, this is good even if you're not in the fiddle. if you want to do jazz or blues. It's good for any style, really.
see, think about this. We're going from G. I'm going to play a G triad to a D triad to an A triad to an E triad, but with voicings, with voice leading. So instead of G, D, A, E, we're going to voice lead it. So G to D, and then A, then E. So this is, this is some of the more advanced harmonic stuff that I teach in my group classes, in my private coaching. Uh, there's lots of ways to access that. You can follow links, reach out to me. Um, but I'm just going to have you play it back to me by ear right now. If you want to figure out kind of the secret sauce for how I practice all these things, we'll figure it out. But, this, but that's what I'm doing. D to G to A to E. I'm going to mess with that because you get a lot of bluesy sounds out of that. On the A chord, it's going to be an A7. That's right, just so you know. Um... and matching G, D, A, E. Let's go back to this. That's that special, special pentatonic scale. So play after me. let you trade with me but i'm just going to use that scale that i just showed you so the scale is one three five sorry one three four five seven flat seven right one three four five flat seven i think this is a really nice um uh alternate pentatonic scale for using on a lot of bluegrass or really a lot of different scenarios. So what I'm gonna do is um, trade, so you don't have to play exactly the same thing back to me. You can play your own lines back to me, but I'm basically gonna try to use that scale for the majority of what I'm doing. Now there's a lot of other scales that I can use, obviously, but I'm just looking at a couple different approaches in this video today. Um, and there's a couple other videos down here that you can find in the Fiddle Styles playlist or in um, where I'm exploring jazz and other different applications, but still, um, covering some of these similar concepts. And that's the thing about if you work with me uh, in some of my coaching programs or check out some of my courses, that's the thing is that I'm covering concepts that apply across a, a, a more of a variety of styles. So even though I'm not like the most authentic fiddle player, like that's not my main, I don't do one style. I like a lot of different styles and I like the challenge of trying to be musical 
across many, uh, across the spectrum of styles and situations. And that's what I teach my students to do. So anyway, we're going to, we're going to end with this. And then after this, I'm going to let the, the groove roll for you. Um, and yeah, we'll take it from there. So we're trading, you play back whatever you want. We're just going to, mainly I'm going to use this, uh, this scale, but I might go into some other sounds too. Uh, <laughs> You got it. Uh huh. off the cobwebs after Christmas here. Uh... trying to stay in that pocket. Try to play within your ability to still keep the groove happening. It's really tricky to create that restraint and that discipline for, our, for ourselves. <laughs> stuff in there as well or trying like I said I'm just get, getting these cobwebs off plus this is a tricky key for me E I'm not sure why
All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this roll out for you. Just let the loop go so you can try some things uh, related to any of the concepts I showed you or just do whatever you want. Um, my recommendation is that you record yourself. When you're playing along with this, set up another device, record yourself, and then listen back to get feedback and be really detached as you do that. Uh, again, this is a big part of what I help people with is um, helping you to practice, get faster gains, getting processes for healthy self-assessment um, so you can become a more confident, consistent musician. Check out the links before reach out to me. Until the next video, happy practicing. You got it. One, two, ready, go. Thank you.